I mean, the water down there is beautiful. The, the water temperature is great for snorkeling and scuba diving, right? I mean, you like to snorkel, don't you? I love snorkeling. It is my favorite pastime in the whole world. And here in Cabo, we have so many amazing locations for snorkeling. And you're right. The water temperature is incredible. Coming from San Diego, California to down here and having the warm waters is something that I wished for when I moved to San Diego over 10 years ago. Completely different, snorkeling and diving. You know, I grew up uh, in Tucson, Arizona, scuba diving in the Sea of Cortez, south. So in the Sea of Cortez, 80 foot visibility, 70, 80 degree water, and then coming out here to California, completely different experience, right? 15 feet foot visibility, it's kind of cold, you need wetsuits. I'm jealous of all the fun things that you're doing, both offline and online. Guess what? We're live. We're, we're live, live right now. And we're live. And so this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm really excited to share you with my audience of mediators, lawyers, and other business owners and professionals, Lauren. This is going to kick ass, and they need to hear your message. So everyone, thanks for joining us today. This is going to be fun. I've got a special guest today, Laura Turton, who's an expert in the Web 2 and Web 3 digital marketing and branding spaces. She's the founder of Hot Take for Creators and Freedom with NFTs. Lauren's exactly the person you need to listen to today. She's exactly the person that conservative mediators, lawyers, and professionals need to pay attention to when it comes to creating digital content, when it comes to staying relevant in 2023 moving forward. Lauren's going to show you how to get your voice heard above all the noise. During today's show, Lauren is going to show you how to leverage an entirely new mindset that works on the digital platforms to allow you to build communities and relationships and bring in new referrals and increase the level of your mediation, legal, or professional business services. She's joining us all the way, if you didn't join us at the very top of the show, from Cabo San Lucas. Some of my best experiences in life, Lauren, were took place down in your neck of the woods. I just want you to know that. And um, our only goal today, everyone, is to plant a few seeds, to give everyone a few ideas of how you can leverage these exciting new digital platforms to build your brand, to build relationships, to expand your community and bring in new business when it comes to mediation, practicing law, and, uh, and really everything else in between. Lauren, why don't we get started just a little bit with personal branding. Why is personal branding so darn important when it comes to everything I just described? And uh, what do we need to pay attention to moving forward in 2023? Thank you so much for the warm introduction. I'm so excited to be here and share with you and your community, your audience, some really important things to think about when it comes to showing up online content creation. And the first thing that we can dive into is your personal brand. Something that we hear all of the time in the business world is you need to niche down. And while your product or your service does need to have an ideal client, a niche that you work with, so those marketing messages can speak to that person, you as a unique individual, a multifaceted person, you actually are the niche. You are the interesting the individual thing that people are attracted to. And I know that that's been something that's been confused in the content creation space for so long is people thinking, well, I need to niche down. I can only talk about business. No, we want to get to know you. We want to know who you are, the human person, not just this, this individual that talks about business. So something to think about when developing your personal brand, becoming the niche is having five pillars of content. Your five pillars of content are what your personal brand is going to be known for. So something like mindset, business expansion, lifestyle, living in Cabo San Lucas, um, setting boundaries and having healthy relationships with others and family, and then traveling. Those are my five pillars of content that you'll see me talking about on one of my TikTok channels. You know that Lauren's going to be sharing that type of content on there. And Alexa, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? You know, what's fun is I have, 
I have that same component five feet to my right. I'm not going to mention her name. And I'll be on calls and these things happen. And, but let me interrupt you for just a second yeah. because keep that train of thought because I definitely want to go there. But one of the things that stood out at me uh, from the very beginning with you is your enthusiasm, your excitement, your uniqueness, your some of the things you've already mentioned, where you live, the photos that you share. You take that casual beach photo um, with the sun setting and you talk about how you're on your way to New York to to speak from the stage at uh, NFT NYC, for example. You combine your environment with your professional endeavors. And I'd like to see more mediators and lawyers do that. Absolutely. When I think about the legal profession and who it is that I would want to interact with, I want to interact with someone that I probably have something in common with that I can have a conversation with outside of, to me, what is scary, which is legal stuff. This is why I, you're, you're such a wonderful example of this. I know that you like to go paddle boarding and do things outside. Like I can vibe with you. I can talk with you because you're a human. And I think in the professional space, you know, like my age group, I'm an elder millennial. People who are elder millennials and older, we grew up with the mindset of you don't talk about this. You don't show this. You don't do this. You don't do this. And then social media came into our world when we were older and we had to learn how to show up online. So I think elder millennials and older, we've had to unlearn so much that was ingrained in us and things are different now and we need to adapt with the times and show up how others are showing up online. I know uh, Gen Z gets a lot of hate, but dang, they show up and they really talk about and they share what they have going on, what's happening in their world. And that's actually where I shifted a lot with my uh, social media presence is when I got on TikTok and I started seeing what people younger than me were doing. And I said, wait, it, it is okay to show up like this. And I'll tell you what, my business has changed since I really have started being transparent, being vulnerable, sharing these different sides of my life that I never shared on Instagram. I never shared on Facebook, but now I am sharing and it's opened up my world so much more. So let's talk a little bit about that. For example, I want to talk about TikTok, but I also want to talk about sharing. And by the way, everybody, we will be sharing your questions and having Lauren answer your questions. You can ask them live during today's show, which is being broadcasted, Lauren, on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and a couple of other popular social media channels. We'll also be entertaining questions through private DMs. I'm monitoring my DMs. Message me, and I'll ask Lauren any questions that you have if you can't jump on and join us live. And um, Lauren, when you, when you talk about showing your human side, for example, we're going to cover seven specific approaches or techniques that mediators and, and lawyers, and business owners and professionals can use to build out their digital brands. Okay. You started off talking about why, what is a personal brand and why it's important. You mentioned, you know, uh, niches and, and, or niching down, however you want to pronounce it why that's so important, but you also continuously talk about showing your human side the way we are right now. I'm in a Hawaiian you know, shirt, which I absolutely love. I think I got it for Father's Day last year. I can't wait for Father's Day this year. You know, you're casual and a beautiful, is that a pink blouse or a, is that what it's a pink blouse? And um, we're just being ourselves. We haven't really even talked about business yet. This is what connects us as human beings. This is what gets people to know, like, and trust us and then pick up the phone and reach out to us, right, for our professional services. Um, but you mentioned TikTok, right? One of the things I noticed with you on TikTok is how you're creating, especially with your new channel, your TikToks. They're easy to do. They're real. Maybe talk a little bit about what you're doing on TikTok and if you are a mediator uh, or an attorney, how you could do the same thing and use the same approach on a TikTok channel or maybe even on an Instagram channel, right? On Reels uh, to build your community and to build relationships and to answer questions and add value to your community. Think about when you call your best friend. No, not call them. When you FaceTime them, you pick up the phone and you hold it like this and you just talk with your friend, right? And you're just vibing about whatever topic it is. I recently started a new TikTok account. It is a mindset and business strategy focused account. And that is the angle that I film these TikToks at because I want it to feel like the person on the other end is on a FaceTime with me. And that's the exact vibe that it gives off. Like you just called Lauren Turton 
She picked up the FaceTime and she's spitting back answers at you. And if you look at it, it's so, so raw, so authentic, so real. It literally feels like you're on a call with me. And I did that with intention and purpose because the topics that I talk about can be complex. They can be overwhelming. And I wanted it to feel easy for the person on the other side. I wanted them to feel like they could digest this information with ease, like they were on a phone call with me, like I'm a friend who's supporting them. You'll also look at that content and see that I'm walking around. There's stuff happening in the background. These are all things to, again, make it feel like we are simply on a FaceTime with one another. This account has done so well so far. It is converting in re regards to my email list. It is the most conversions I've ever, ever gotten for my email list is from this account. The other thing I did when starting this account, which is a really important strategy, is I start off every video like we're in a conversation. It's not me coming on and saying, hi, I'm Lauren Turton, a business coach who helps. A no, it's me just going in with something strong and fast, like we're in the middle of a conversation. So when you're thinking about your channels, maybe starting a new one, really investigate what's happening on TikTok in regards to these different styles of content creation. Again, I said it earlier, elder millennials and older, this is a lot of unlearning for us. It really is. But once you realize that people are showing up in this way and that you can too, it can really open up your world and truly change your business. What I've noticed with the approach you're using, Lauren, is it's not necessarily just, just hopping on and, and starting off as you would in a conversation, but you have an energy level. Mm -hmm. You're immediately capturing our attention. And I want professionals uh, in my world, guys, gals, and, 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 and everyone else, uh, you know, bringing that enthusiasm and understanding and leveraging that ability to connect. How important is it to be animated or excited about what we're doing uh, when you're creating content on these channels? What are your thoughts on that? Understanding my dynamic, my pro profession, but what you know works on these platforms? Well, I like to treat it like the secret that you're telling a friend. Oh my gosh, you'll never believe what I just found out. Ah, guess what I just heard. You know, these are these, this is how I talk to my friends, how I talk to my peers. And so that's how I get online is like, oh my gosh, guess what I just found out. And then there's the information. And, so and you literally I, start off like that. Yeah, I'm like, start your show you know, like, like that. I'm like, I'm going. And that is my personality. That's how I show up in the world. And I want that to reflect on socials. So whatever your demeanor is, whatever your personality is, however it is that you show up in the world, when you're interacting with loved ones, with friends, start bringing that out on socials. If it's something that you're not comfortable with now, sounds cheesy, but practice in the mirror. Practice in the mirror. Then you practice with your phone, just holding it and being able to do these actions. Then you hit the record button and you say, okay, I, I like the way that came off or I didn't. Why didn't I like it? And then you adjust from there. I, this wasn't all natural to me, Mitch. I had to learn how to do it. But now that I know how to execute mm. in this way, again, it, it makes all the difference in my business. And notice, you know, Lauren's using her hands while she's speaking. She's using her facial expressions. Uh, a lot of platforms that we both use, I'm using StreamYard right now to share this across the, uh, the, the internet, uh, or whether I'm using my phone or YouTube, you can record in a private mode. You can record yourself and practice like Lauren just mentioned, and then look at or ask other people who you, who you trust, family members. What do you think? What could I have done different, right? Mitch, you could smile more. You could slow down. For those trial lawyers out there, what do we do after each and every trial? We walk out in the hall, hallway and we ask the jurors, you know, what could I have done to uh, have done a better job during trial? What could I have changed in my communication approach to keep this more in interesting for you, right? We had, to, Lauren, we asked these questions, whether we win, wow. lose, or draw. And you always want to listen to what the jurors say. Sometimes they'll tell you, Mitch, speed up, speak faster. And of course, the next trial, I'll speak faster. And guess what they tell me after that trial? Mitch, you need to slow down. You're speaking too fast. But I think this, this input's really valuable when it comes to these new platforms, as Lauren just mentioned. And when it comes to these new platforms, Lauren, talk a little bit about 
if you were a mediator, if you were an arbitrator, a lawyer, a professional, something like this, what are some of the platforms right now, in addition to, we talked about TikTok, you would suggest that we look at when it comes to creating content? Uh, and then when it comes to creating content, how often, what one of the questions we just got in is, how do I know what to create content around? Good question. What do we talk about when we go live? So, or when we're creating content. So Lauren, maybe I threw a lot at you, but if you could just kind of play around with some of those concepts. So something I want to share with everyone are some incredible updates that are happening on several platforms right now. TikTok just recently rolled out new ways to monetize in platform. It's for creators that have 10,000 followers or more. If you don't have 10K on TikTok, don't worry. That is your goal to get there. So you can start unlocking these new ways to monetize an app. Twitter recently shared that they're going to be rolling out new ways to monetize on Twitter as well. And the reason why I share this is because it is important for the platforms that you're putting content out on to stay up to date on what these platforms are uh, doing so that you can leverage what's happening on those platforms. There are so many opportunities out in the world in regards to sharing your message, creating content, but now monetization is really coming into play. Video content, TikTok is where it's at. A lot of people are also having success with YouTube shorts. Twitter. And wh Twitter what is, is it? What is a YouTube short? What's a YouTube short? Up. Oh, I think she froze up. So Lauren, and, I don't know if you're froze, oh. frozen at your end, but am I back? I know Cabo has some. You are back. I know Cabo has some okay. interesting internet challenges. Okay. Mm -hmm. The quality of internet is not as good as the quality of snorkeling. I, I get that. But you mentioned YouTube shorts. We all know what YouTube is. What are YouTube shorts? YouTube shorts is similar to TikTok where it's a vertical short form video. I believe with YouTube shorts, it's 60 seconds or under. Where I'm seeing people have success right now is more so on TikTok because they are actually pushing a longer form video right now. So if video is your jam or you want to explore video, get on TikTok. Twitter is a wonderful platform as well and they are doing some things too in regards to video. So pay attention for that. Something that I want to encourage everyone to think about is not multi-purposing your content just across all platforms. You hear a lot of people say that. And the reason why I am not for that is because I've looked at the data. I've looked at my data on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and I've analyzed that when I just blast the same thing across all platforms, it doesn't perform as well. So the way that I go about this is I pick a theme that I want to talk about and then I write the copy for it. I'll create a photo or a video that goes with it. And then I'll tweak and change it depending on which platform it's going to go on. Generally speaking, it's, it's very similar, but tweaked and changed for the audience on that platform. I, I love the fact that you brought that up because oftentimes in a different to, difference to content life, what we can post on Twitter versus Instagram or, or a LinkedIn post, we have limitations in characters, we have limitation in video lengths, and it's really important everyone to pay attention to the type of content we're creating, which platform are you creating it for, and then sharing it on those platforms uh, the right way so that you are blending in and complementing the theme of the community. You're adding value instead of being a distraction. And when it comes to creating content, Lauren, one of the most effective tools I've had as a professional is what's called newsjacking. Talking about newsjacking is what's gotten me on stage with David Merriman Scott at Tony Robbins Business Mastery events. I basically talk about breaking news stories. I pull out my phone like you've already done. I go live, whether I'm on the beach, out on a paddle or sitting in my office, and I'll share my two cents worth in a positive and constructive way, trying to add value to the story as to what's happening. I think that's a really easy way for mediators and arbitrators and lawyers to create content, pay attention to what's happening in the world. And there seems to be something exciting happening each and every day and then building content around that. But talk to us a little bit, for example, if somebody wants to newsjack, if somebody wants to leverage these trends, there's a difference between just reporting on it, that makes you a reporter, as opposed to adding your opinion. Adding your thoughts, what you think is going to happen next, 
you know, as this story develops, right? Maybe talk to us a little bit about that, because I, I think that's something our mediators and lawyers can leverage more so than what I'm watching many do right now. Well, we got we to gotta always remember when people choose to work with me, with you, with whoever's on the other end, that they're choosing to work with you because they know, like, and trust you. So how do they get to know, like, and trust you? It's because you have an opinion and most likely they agree with that opinion or even if it's a different opinion, they're still cool with it. So give your opinions. Newsjacking is such an easy way to create content. You get on Google, you type in the topic, you go to tools, you hit, I think it's something like latest, 24 hours or something, and you make a video about that. You can show yourself, did you just hear what happened with blah, 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 blah? Show the article, come back to you and say, here's, here's, my, here's, my, uh, here's my takeaways on this article. Let me know what you think. And then you get people going in the comments about that. It's a, it really is a fun way to create content with newsjacking. With the question that came up earlier, a way for you to decide what to create content about is ask your community. Create a video mm -hmm. saying, hey, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mediator who specializes in this. What questions do you have? And then people can ask questions about it. Or I'm in the process of creating a training on the three ways to optimize your content creation. What questions do you have about that? And then people can chime in and, and ask questions. Get people sure. involved in what you're doing. Get people involved in the process. People love to give their opinions and they love to be a part of the process. So get them involved. Don't, don't we Don't we love to share our opinions? They're like belly buttons, right? Everybody's got one. And if you're a lawyer or a mediator, you've got two or three. So so you just said something that has it's been so powerful for me. I mean, everyone pay attention to what Lauren's, Lauren's telling you because it really does work. As a lawyer, as a mediator, I've been mediating cases since 1991, Lauren. You know, I kind of take for granted that everybody knows what I'm doing. I kind of take for granted that everybody knows the process. And as I've been transitioning into private full-time mediation, I shared a couple of posts, right? The 20 most common questions that mediators get as to the mediation process. What is it? How does it work? Is it expensive? What do I have to do? Um, Zoom medi mediations. How does a Zoom mediation work? Well, of course we're using Zoom, right? But like, what are the steps? I mean, do I need to talk to the other person? Are they in the same video like you and I are right now? Or, and then I introduce the concept of breakout rooms where oftentimes you're never even going to see the other person in a Zoom mediation. I'm bouncing back and forth. Talk a little bit about the content creation approach where think about what are the most common questions you get every week or every month as an XYZ, whatever you do for a living, and then building content around that. If I was to ask you that, okay, share with us in a sentence, you know, what do you, what do you consider, you, you know, what do you do? What are the 10 most often asked questions that you get on a weekly or monthly basis? And then in answering those questions, Lauren, how would you go about doing so and on which platform? Does that make sense? Great. Yes, absolutely. So first I want to break down the different platforms because it might be overwhelming for someone who's just getting into creating video content. You want to have a primary platform. That is your number one platform where you're posting most all of your content. That is your go-to. Right now, for me, it's TikTok. It used to be Instagram. You're going to have your number one platform. And then you're going to have two supporting platforms under that platform. This way, you don't get overwhelmed. You know where you're going. You know where what you're doing. And then you can get your video content creations kicked off. Like Mitch just said, you answer the questions that people are asking you. I'm sure you know in your profession what questions people are asking you. Just start answering those questions. Make the videos, like I said earlier, where you tell people to ask you questions. Also, get on Google and type in frequently most asked questions for my industry. And you just start making videos off of that. Another great form of content creation is storytelling. So I remember when... And then you tell your own story of, I remember when a client came to me and said, dee, 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 And then you include a strong call to action. Or I remember when I used to get overwhelmed with another great bucket for content creation is overcoming limiting beliefs, mindset, things like that, which, which we all deal with, right? 
share your journey with that as well. So I remember when um, people also love the come up stories. So I used to be like this, or my client used to be like this. And now I'm over here. Now they're over here. And you include the value of how that transformation took place. So, so question answering, so storytelling, these are really, really great forms of content creation. That, that is gold, what you just shared. I mean, if we don't talk about anything else, the last two minutes of what you just shared, Lauren, is what will distinguish a mediator or a, an arbitrator or a lawyer or a business owner from everyone else in his, her, or their industry creating content on social media, storytelling, grabbing attention the right way, using metaphors to help make an impact, starting strong to immediately grab attention so that somebody doesn't click or swipe or immediately go someplace else, right? Being unique, being memorable, all the things that trial lawyers know when it comes to picking a jury and giving an opening statement, these same approaches work on some of the digital platforms. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for bringing content creation those tools into content creation into this conversation, Lauren, because it's critically important. And I think if if my community doubles down on that, how can I start quickly? How can I immediately grab attention by I remember when or did you just see? Or look, everyone, everyone, go to Lauren's TikTok channels. Watch what she does. She puts herself out there and Lauren, for mediators that do exactly what I just suggested, they jump over to your TikTok channel and they see what you're creating over there. I can tell you right now, 95 out of 100 are going to go, I couldn't do that in a million years. Now, you and I both know that they can. So how do we, what are some steps we can take to give ourselves permission to, instead of blending in with everyone else in town and trying to fit in, how can we be unique? and stand out at the same time, maintain that level of professionalism the clients expect from us while adding value to our community. What do we need to tell ourselves to be more like you on TikTok and other platforms? First, it needs to be in your schedule. This needs to be a non-negotiable that you start implementing and executing on. So for some people, it might look best if you batch create your content once a week. You block out, let's say, two hours and you say, I'm going to write all of my copy. I'm going to take my photos. I'm going to get my videos for all of the content I need to distribute next week. For some people, it looks best to block off 30 minutes a day to do that. But make it a part of yourself to be non-negotiable for content creation. It's very, very important that you put it into your schedule, into your agenda, and you get this done. Remember, this is building community. This is connecting. This is your marketing. So it does need to be a non-negotiable. And then from there, you, you start with baby steps. I mentioned earlier having a primary platform. Figure out the platform that you, you want to be on, you want to be a part of, you want to build community on and get really, really good at that platform. Really understanding it, understanding the culture of the platform, the trends that are happening and, and, and get good at it. Fall in love with that, with that process that progress that you're making on that platform. And then you add on the other platform. I know for some people, video is, is intimidating. They don't want to do video. Well, mm -hmm. then get really good at writing on Twitter and write Twitter threads. There's an incredible creator on Twitter, NFT God. I think it's NFT underscore God. Go follow that account and you'll see the, the written format that he does. It's, it's incredible. Or you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with pictures right now. Then all right, go hard on Instagram. Video, you're going to be over on TikTok. But again, just get really, really good at one platform and then expand from there. So circling back, step one, make it a non-negotiable. Step two, get really good at a primary platform and then add on from there. I love that. You know, if you're a foodie, if you're a chef, if you like to cook and you're a mediator, if you're sharing pictures of your process on Instagram, for example, you're not on live video. You're simply sharing images of your favorite meals, your favorite recipes, your favorite restaurants, whatever it may be. You're going to start connecting with other people, with other lawyers who want to refer to a mediator, with other lawyers that need a mediator, with clients who are looking for a good mediator that share the same hobby, passion, or interest. And like you said, there are all types of ways of doing this without having to be on video. If you enjoy writing, then write blog posts, right? And share your content across these platforms. We could also talk about, and I'm not going to dive into this because I've got a couple of questions I want to bring up, but you know, you can also use AI to 
uh, type in your message, everybody. Like, for example, if there's a breaking news story, you can spend a couple of minutes, type in a message. That message then gets put into a video, whether it's your face or an avatar, that you can then use as a video to add value, stand out and be unique and do something that all the other mediators and lawyers aren't doing. And most of you have seen me do this and it works really, really well. But we have a question from Dan that I wanna put up on the screen because I think, I think it's important. Many of us are very uh, into, interested, doubling down on. I get a lot of value out of LinkedIn just because it's a professional mm -hmm. platform and uh, for just a bunch of different reasons. But Dan talks a little bit about everyone, if you're listening to the audio version of the show, and we will be dropping the audio version, everybody in a podcast type of version. Maybe I'll have a couple of avatars uh, uh, sharing another version of the show. But Dan's, you know, mentioned LinkedIn. We've talked about TikTok and Instagram and a little bit about Twitter. But let's talk about mediators, attorneys, other professionals using LinkedIn to do the things, Lauren, that you've already described. What are the differences? What are some additional approaches or techniques that they may want to use? What are your thoughts on LinkedIn with our profession moving forward in 2023 and beyond? LinkedIn is a gold mine, as we all know. LinkedIn is a more professional app. But with that being said, there's been a major shift in LinkedIn in the last two years or so. People are showing up more authentically on that app, and they're making it more fun than it used to be. One of the greatest ways to create content on LinkedIn is similar to what Mitch mentioned earlier with newsjacking is to take an article that's just come out that pertains to your industry and then write a thought leader piece on it with your opinion. I definitely encourage you to start pushing video as well on that platform because then people get familiar with you know, the way that you speak, what you look like, et cetera. But it can be as simple as that, is you take a nice article from Forbes, you write a nice, write a nice piece on it and just give your opinions and give your thoughts on it. That is that is the difference with LinkedIn compared to the other platforms is people are definitely giving their opinions on topics on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also one of those platforms that you can you can find people on. I recently needed to find some people on there and I just at a certain company and I just went on LinkedIn. I typed in the company name, I typed in the city where I wanted to find the people. Brrr, everyone's there. I was like, all right, I'm about I to I love how you do that all. by the way. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to connect with you all. And that is the beauty with LinkedIn is people are on there. So definitely learn uh, the features of LinkedIn and the different tools that they offer on that platform to make your experience even better. You know, what's interesting is um, James Gatto, who's a senior partner at Shepard Mullen in DC. He's an IP lawyer. He's one of my go-to IP lawyers. My daughter works for Shepard Mullen in Century City. Uh, and it was fun introducing Jim to my daughter, Alexandra, in Central, Central City. Um, he posted a link. He reshared someone else's post about whether or not AI can be held liable for defamation. Okay, think about this, everybody. Can AI or the parent company be held if AI defames somebody? That got my attention. I turned around and a couple of days later, I created a post diving into that in detail. Like, what are the different theories of liability, product liability, defamation, libel, slander, liability issues? And I had some fun with the article. I didn't take myself too seriously. By the way, Lauren, in the first paragraph in the article, I tagged Jim. I tagged Shepard Mullen. Hey, this, is, this was the inspiration for my idea. And then I turned around, created a compelling image, and I shared it not only on LinkedIn, but also different versions of it on the different platforms. Okay, now having said that, I didn't have to spend any time trying to come up with a new idea. It slapped me in the face when I saw it. So let's take a step back for a second. You heard my approach on how I did this, tagging someone else, making sure there's engagement with what we're sharing on LinkedIn. Maybe double down and highlight just a little bit about shining a light on someone else and oh. engaging in the content thereafter. I think that's an area that a lot of mediators and lawyers drop the ball with because we're busy and we don't think it's important. It's probably one of the most important we, things we can do on LinkedIn, isn't it? Well, let's remember social media is called social media. So let's make sure that we are being social. And the way that you can be social on social media is sharing other people's content, <laughs> tagging them, 
engaging in the comments, doing all of those things that Mitch mentioned, right. actually being social on social media. I think a lot of people forget that. The comment section, oh, the comment section, especially on TikTok and LinkedIn is is a gold mine. There is so much value and information that's happening in the comment section. And ultimately, that's what you want to get going on your own content is content that really connects with people and compels them to take action and have a conversation in the comments. That's when you start building community. Yeah. And, and so spend the time to engage, spend the time to interact, put yourself out there and you'll be having conversations with people that may have never talked to an attorney before. They're, maybe they're intimidated about walk, walking into a lawyer's office. I know I was when I met my grandfather's attorney back in the day, right? It was, I was shaking when I walked into this lawyer's office. I didn't grow up in a family full of lawyers. And um, the power of what we're talking about, um, I'm a huge sports fan. Uh, when Kobe Bryant's helicopter went down, you know, it just like ripped <clears throat> the heart out of my chest. What a tragedy for he and his family and everyone else involved. But the lawyer in me immediately thought to myself, well, Kobe wasn't flying the helicopter there was a private company in charge of his family's safety and the safety of everyone else in that helicopter. And so I did a TikTok on that. It wasn't pointing fingers. I just said, look, this just happened. It's tragic. Um, what in the world happened? How did this happen? What are some of the legal issues we need to look into, right? And Lauren, that TikTok video, I mean, I had a couple hundred thousand views within 24 to 48 hours. Now, most of mine don't get a lot of views. But this one did massive amount of comments, a massive amount of engagement. And when it's all said and done, I've created new friends from that TikTok post. I've created clients that have come in after the fact for unrelated matters. It was an opportunity to create a conversation, allow people to have access to an attorney to talk about things that, that are on our mind. And um, I didn't know if it would be a complete waste of time doing the TikTok video. If I'm not mistaken, it, I might have done it while I was out on a run, which, by the way, everybody, you can pull up your phone and do a video. This is not hard stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I think it was time well spent. I felt better as a human being getting some thoughts off of my chest. I know some other people felt the same way from the comments after reading it, listening to it. And so I want everyone to know you can, you can, the only limit to the content that you're creating is your own imagination. And sometimes when we look at what other people are doing or when we pay attention to the news, it will spark new ideas that other mediators and lawyers aren't talking about. All right, so let me back up just a second. Uh, Lauren is an expert when it comes to web two and web three, you know, digital marketing and branding and everything else in between. We're talking about seven different ways for mediators and lawyers and, and arbitrators and other professionals to create content on the digital platforms, to leverage these platforms, to build your brand, to build relationships, to build community, right? And we've talked about number one, you know, what is your brand? What should you be focusing on? Number two, becoming the niche or niche, you know, it's like figuring out exactly what you should be talking about. Now, I'm not very good at that. I talk about the law, litigation, trial advocacy. I talk about web two, web three, video. I talk about battle boarding, trending news, but that's me. Like, that's who I am. And so I'm okay with that. I embrace it. I understand the downside to being all over the place. But, you know, be you, right? Be you with some strategic effort and it works out in the long run. Uh, number three, understand the different platforms that you can be creating content on. We talked about that. So if you're just joining us, go back and watch the recording. Number four, creating content that connects. We kind of talked about that using storytelling and metaphors. Number five, creating content that converts. I want to dive just a little bit deeper into that. We've talked about creating content. What are some different ways as a mediator or arbitrator or lawyer where we can actually have that con content convert into a paying client or, or a referral from someone else that's following us in the community as a paying client or anything else in between, Lauren? Because I think that's an important element that a lot of us are missing. It is an important, important element into all of this because with creating content, creating connections, creating community, we also want to sign clients, make money. We are business owners. That's something that we need to do in order to keep our ecosystem going. One of the big changes that I made 
in regards to calls to action. So CTAs, calls to action are the last sentence that you want to include on your written copy, or it's the last sentence you wanna say with your uh, videos. Calls to actions could look like, click the link in my bio, like this post, share this post with a friend who would find value in it. You know, things, to the, things like that. You're calling people to take action and you're telling them what to take action on. When I changed to saying what I'm going to share with you next, this, this changed my company. I started to say this instead. Comment, hashtag me, if you want more info. Comment, hashtag action, if you're ready to take action. Comment, hashtag now, if you are. And when I started prompting people to comment directly on that post that they were on right then, there were so many more people who were engaging because it was just one step for them to take. They are already on that post. Comment hashtag me. Okay, now I see that Stacy commented hashtag me. I can then slide in her DMs and open up a conversation with her and see if this is someone that I can support further. And if it is, I can send them a link to book a call with me, I could send them a link for a free download, whatever the situation might be. And the reason why is because people are on the content. They're not going anywhere. Okay, comment hashtag me. Then they scroll on. But when you prompt people, click the link in my bio for more information. Now I got to click the link in your bio. Well, what if it doesn't load right away? Okay, then what if I got to read a bunch of stuff and then I got to click here and put my email address in like you've lost me, right? So right. when you switch over to comment, hashtag me, comment, hashtag action, comment, hashtag now, whatever it is you want to prompt them to do on that post, you're going to convert a lot more and you're going to be able to get more conversations going. You know, and I think one of the secrets is doing, doing so and practicing so that it's a very natural part of the conversation. You don't want to come across salesy on social media. You don't want to tell people to do something. You want to invite them to come into your world and be part of the conversation, which is which is what Lauren's saying. And I'm doubling down on, on that little reminder, Lauren, because as, as uh, a lot of my friends and intermediators and lawyers, we have type A personalities. We know what we need to do to fix your problem, okay? We can listen to you talk to us about your problem for 30 minutes, or we can get in there and fix it in 30 seconds, right? But by getting in there and fix, fixing it in 30 seconds, oftentimes we come across as being abrasive, as mm -hmm. a know-it-all, and we're not really allowing the emotional part of the conflict resolution to happen. And sometimes that's even more important than fixing the immediate problem. It's being heard, right? And being heard on social media is inviting people to stay connected with you. I shared a post I was looking while you were speaking in, in the background earlier today, and it's a post I just saw, it was interesting to me. It said 42% of CEOs at this week's Yale CEO Summit say AI could destroy humanity in five to 10 years. Now, I tweeted that out. I shared it on LinkedIn. I probably shared it on Facebook. And I asked the question, Lauren, what do you think? And then I said, I'm with the other 58% to think we're going to be just fine. In fact, I think AI will substantially improve humanity. How about you? So in my post, what I did is I offered the opportunity to people who are interested in this topic or who follow me to share their two cents worth. And I've gotten some really good feedback from people that either I've never heard of before, right? Or I haven't talked to in a long time. And I also noticed that when you use the word please in your social media posts, please feel free to engage. Please share your comments. I think the, uh, the response rate is something like 60 to 70% higher in most cases. And it depends on context, right? Then, at least in my world with my generation, I don't know about, about you know, Gen Y and Gen Z, but it seems to be more effective. So being polite and being kind and having empathy when we're creating these posts, I think goes a long ways. Absolutely. And something that I had thought about earlier, and I don't want to forget this thought because I think it's really, really important for people in your industry to think about is something that you said earlier about accessibility or being intimidated to talk with a lawyer. So something I just thought of is you could go live on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever your platform is once a week where you give feedback to people in the comments. 
This is something that I do is I do audits for people's social media pages and I'll get on TikTok live and have people let, let me know their handle in the, in the comments and then I'll pull it up on my laptop and I'll give live feedback. This could be something that people in your industry execute mm -hmm. on where people can now get access to them and it's not as intimidating. It. It's not as scary. And that. like you were saying earlier, it's like being polite, being kind, all of the things that we expect in person to build connection and have relationship. Let's do that on smile. social media. Yeah. Let's and do that smile on too, everybody. Media. That, you know, look, we, that's gold. What you just said, you know, having open office hours, for example, answering questions, you know, having lunch, lunch with a mediator, lunch with a lawyer and right. And just, you're going to have lunch anyway, and just sit down and invite people to come in and have conversations and do live Q and a and start building relationships. I mean, that's so important. Here's a little trick that mediators can use. I'm going to play off of something you just said that reminded me what everyone can do is as a mediator in town, you can reach out to the managing partner of the 20 top firms who may need a good mediator or mediating company. And you may want to offer to interview them on your weekly live video show or your weekly podcast show. And the point of the show is not to drum up business. The point of the show is not to have them hire you as a mediator. The point of the show, for example, might be how, how, how successful people overcame obstacles in life to get to where they are now. Or my, the, my favorite story from my life experiences that brought me to where I am today. And you shine a light on these partners and you have, give them an opportunity and a platform to share their story. And keep it fun. Keep it light. Maybe you're both having lunch while you're doing this. Maybe you're both sharing a cocktail in the evening when you're doing this. Maybe you're both down at the beach, right? Watching the sunset and your studio is on the sand while you're do doing this. You're going to create new relationships. And guess who they're going to reach out to the next time they need a mediator? Either you or the company that you're working for to mediate that case. The technology that Lauren's talking about allows you to do this inexpensively. It allows you to do it quickly and easily and frankly, very effectively. So Lauren, I'm glad you brought that up because I actually feel like that's one been one of the most powerful things I've leveraged with podcasting and live video is shining a light on other people, right? Good people that need to have a light shined on them. And uh, in return over time, good things come back full circle. That's certainly not why I'm, why I'm doing it. Now, if I was 20 years earlier building my practice, yeah, probably would have been a big part of why I was doing it. I'm not there in my career right now. I just like making sure that good people are highlighted and amplified. And, uh, and that also applies to what's going on in the community, right? Community Absolutely. service. What are good people? And, you know, so there's just all different types of ways of creating valuable content that might not have anything to do with being a lawyer or being a mediator, but everything to do with building community. And as we're working our way through the show, our sixth tip, Lauren, is the creation flow. Okay. And we've probably talked a little bit, we've talked a little bit about creation flow, but look, we're super busy. We're super busy. We're mediating cases. We're trying cases. Everything that you're talking about um, does take a little bit of time if you want to do it right. What are some thoughts or approaches or tips you can share when it comes to the creation process, when it comes to third-party delegation, when it comes to you know all the things that we want to do now that we watch this show and listen to your brilliance you know, moving forward? I want to hit the ground running next Monday morning. How can I keep this creation process working so that it's something I'll continue to do six months, 12 months, 24 months from today? We all need to remember that having systems in place allow creativity to flow. So you need to find the system that works for you. Now, I'm old school. For me, Google Drive is the place that works best for me to have my content organized. So I have templates. I have things set up in Google Drive so that I can just pop on and start doing my thing. A lot of people are um, gravitating towards more <laughs> updated systems like Notion, Airtable, Trello. Find what works for you. Create the backend system that can house your content creation so that when you do create your content, you're ready to rock and roll. And like I mentioned earlier, what works best for you? Is it batch creating your content once a month, once a week, once a day? 
play with it. Figure out what feels good for you. But again, make this a non-negotiable so that you are putting out content and you are leveraging these wonderful platforms that we have access to so that you can connect further with people. And then the other thing is, is explore. I want you to get on TikTok and I want you to type in the hashtags for your industry. And I want you to see the types of content that people in your industry are putting out on TikTok. Because again, how people create on TikTok is very different than how they create on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I want you to be open-minded to the different styles of content creation. So that could like that could look like speaking direct to camera like this. It could look like recording you working and then doing a voiceover with text on screen where you tell a story. It could look like a video vlog, a vlog where you're recording your whole day and then you do a voiceover talking about your day. It could just look like you working on your computer and then a caption at the end of it. There's so many different styles of content creation on TikTok. So explore, and then I want you to explore pushing yourself to create different types of content. And soon you'll find yourself settling into one that feels really, really good for you and something that you're able to recreate and duplicate very easily. You mentioned Google Drive. I'm old school too. That just seems to work. And what we're talking about everybody is we just set up a free Google Drive and you can, you can have a, a, a Google document where you can keep track of your scripts, your social media posts, your links. You can keep track and upload videos, photographs, all the things that you're going to be using and the content you're creating, you can keep it in one place. It's super easy. Uh, you mentioned something that I just want to double down on, and uh, that is think about new ways of creating content. For example, when I'm walking into a mediation or a court, courtroom, oftentimes, I'll go live or I'll create a video. Hey, I'm walking in. I've got a Web3 company that's in a disagreement on a, uh, a blockchain smart contract in, uh, issue. We're going to get it all worked out. This is what the building looks like. I'll be back once the mediation's done. I'll let you know what happens. Then when I walk out or when I get back to the office, once I've had a chance to catch my breath, I'll shoot a follow-up video. And then depending on pr client privacy issues, state bar rules, I've created some content that kind of takes – the prospective client into my world is kind of interesting, right? And I'd like to see more mediators do that. And while you're doing that, you can be creative. You can show the surrounding area. People aren't familiar with what a legal conference room looks like. Many have never been in one before. Or if you're down at the courthouse walking into a courtroom, if the clerk tells you it's okay to take a few photos because there's nobody in there, and they will, I've done this, um, share that in your videos. Lauren, I was in a, a trial, a two-week trial, and I usually get along with opposing counsel. You know, we just agree to disagree and we try the case. And it's all good. But about halfway through the trial, during the morning break, he leans over. He's got his phone. He's like, I got to ask you a question. He goes, I'm on Twitter. Throughout this whole trial, you're like tweeting two, three times a day. You're sitting right next to me. You're not on Twitter. What, how are you doing this, right? And the reason I'm bringing this up is that what we were doing back then is during Sunday night football, we would sit down and I'd have my team and yours truly, and we'd create our content. And then we'd use a platform, and this is a plug, I'm a brand ambassador for Agora Pulse, but we'd use Agora Pulse, which is a platform that allows us to upload this content, whether it's written content, text, videos, audio content, and schedule it out to go out to all the different platforms that Lauren and I have talked about you know, for the next week, for the next month, for the next year. And that's what I was doing while I was in trial. Now, I'm a big fan of sharing content that's relevant when things are breaking, right? It's hard to plan ahead sometimes. But there are tools depending on how busy you are, how busy your team is. And let's talk about that real quick is when it comes to, I'm getting a message, Agora Pulse. Uh, if you would like to uh, check out Agora Pulse, go to mitchjackson.com forward slash brands, B-R-A-N-D-S. And you'll see the Agora Pulse link. Thank you for asking. Um, talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, because I, I, I know we're pressed for time, bringing team and teamwork and independent contractors yes. into the creation process. How, how can we do that? Will it save us time? Is it okay to do that? What are your thoughts? Absolutely. We need to stay in our zones of geniuses. And so a zone of genius that you're about to be a part of is
Lauren, we... you froze up. Oh. It's okay. Hit refresh. Once again, everybody, it's yep. the Cabo internet, but that zone of genius, yep. that, and then you froze. Okay. So it's important for us to be in our zones of genius. And something that you all are about to step into is your zone of genius with content creation. I highly encourage everyone when it's the right time in your business and maybe a little bit before you think it's the right time to bring on a virtual assistant that can support you with uploading the content either to a platform like Mitch mentioned earlier that auto schedules and distributes the content for you or for some of the platforms if it needs to be manu up, manually uploaded, somebody who can handle that part for you. And like Mitch said, we wanna be creating content that uh, ahead of time in regards to maybe like promotions or marketing that we might have that needs to go out on a time schedule. And we also want to be putting content out as it's happening, as things are relevant. So definitely bring somebody on who can specialize in supporting you with distributing your content. And they can also help you with um, the back end and organizational process. Like I know for me, it might look like I'm super organized because you see me out there on social media. Put, no, behind the scenes, it does, like, it does. no, no, yeah. Lauren Turton is a, you know, and I'm sure so many of you can relate to that. So making sure that you have the right people and systems in place to help you be successful is really, really important. I love that. You know, the last thing we we're going to talk about, and by the way, I'm going to ask you uh, at the end of the show to share your contact information. So I'm sure if anyone would like to reach out and maybe get some ideas or suggestions from you, you're, you'd be willing to answer their questions. But trending updates, there's a lot happening each and every day, especially in the Web3 space, especially when it comes to AI, when it comes to, uh, you know, everything Web3, Metaverse. It's hard to stay on top of everything. What are some of the trends that you would recommend mediators, lawyers, and professionals pay attention to moving forward? Well, what's something that you actually personally like as a person? Are you into celebrity gossip, celebrity dating, celebrity culture? Is that something that you are into? Start reporting so on only that. Vander, only Vanderpump rules, but go ahead. Okay, so maybe that's something that you start talking about, or is it sports? Start, start, start talking about what's relevant that you that you love, that you're excited about. And then put your twist on it based off of your industry. And soon you become known as, oh my gosh, my lawyer is so dope. He's on TikTok and he talks about this and he paddleboards. Like that's that's the vibe that you want to give off. So go go back to you as a person, the human. What makes you excited? Start talking about that. Sharing about what's what's relevant in that world. Put your own unique twist and spin on it from your lens, your perspective, from your industry, from your profession. I love that. And give yourself permission to do that. It's not hard. It's a little scary sometimes at first, especially if you're not, if you're using video and you're not used to it. But once again, you don't need to be using video. You can be creating audio content with video backgrounds, with moving pictures. There's all types of ways to do the things that, that Lauren suggested we do to become relevant, to build your brand in these new digital platforms. Lauren, this has just been outstanding. I, I can't wait, number one, to do some snorkeling with you down in Cabo. That's number one, okay? Number two, I can't wait to hear the feedback from all of the mediators and lawyers and other professionals in my life who actually take action on some of the things that we talked about today. I think what I told you before we went live is, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a community with a lot of really, really smart people. They know what it takes to be successful. But knowing what you need to do is a little bit different than actually taking action. And that's where I see a lot of lawyers and mediators drop the ball. It's taking action. And then they look back in a year and they wonder why there's no engagement on LinkedIn or they're not bringing in new clients on TikTok or Twitter. It's because you need to be consistent and you need to take action. So I want everyone to enjoy this fun part of practicing law. This fun part of being a mediator, it's adding value. It's, it's getting up and doing things a little bit different than what everyone else in town is doing. It keeps life exciting. After 37 years of practicing law, I'm more excited today, everyone, to hop out of bed than I was on day one. And you're not going to meet many lawyers that feel that way. And it's because I'm doing the things that Lauren's telling us to do. I'm creating content. I'm meet, making new, building new relationships adding more value, answering questions on the different platforms and not being afraid to take risk, right? And if this guy can do it, right? I've never been accused of being the brightest bulb in the lamp. 
you can do it too. Lauren, if anyone wants to reach out to you uh, to either have you step in and assist them with their with their projects or just to reach out and start you know, a new connection, what's the best way for people to do so? Well, I want everyone to take action immediately. So I want you to go to bit.ly slash pop off now and you'll find in the menu a prompt for free content prompts. I want you to go get your free content Ooh. prompts. The first page is an incredible list of content ideas. The second page is a list of hooks that you can start your content with. Again, that's bit.ly slash pop off now and pop off now is all capital letters. And under that same link, you're going to find all of the ways to connect with me. There's a button there to um, do a consultation with me where I'm going to dive into your content and give you strategy and feedback on how you can really take things to the next level. I really appreciate you having me here today, Mitch. It's been so great to connect with you to talk about a, a topic that we both love. And I'm excited to see everyone's content. I am too. It's going to be fun to see what people are doing and how they're, how they're taking our, the seeds that we're planting and making it their own. That's the exciting part, you know? And so this yes. has been fun. Warren, totally appreciate you. You know that my community and yours truly, we have your back and uh, appreciate the time you put aside today to share your wisdom with, with my audience and with my community and frankly, our community, right? So yeah. listen, this is awesome. Enjoy Cabo. I'm going to get back to work and get ready for Father's Day. I hope the family spoils me big time, but you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And between now and next time, everybody. Uh, oh, by the way, Lauren, if you have time, you can put that bit.ly link in the comments. I'm over on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. You know, that would be great. It'll make it easy for the mediators and lawyers to stay connected with you. You got the green light to do that. Listen, everyone, between now and the next time, enjoy the journey and never stop making each day your masterpiece. Bye-bye, everybody. Stick around, Lauren.